Morning everybody. So just do a follow up here at Santa Monica job. The lawn got its first mow after it's been about three weeks since it's was laid down. You can see how all the plants are slowly starting to grow. There's a lot of new growth on the podocarpus there. And you can see we got some nice flowers spreading quite fast. And then over here, I'm also going to be building a three garden beds up here on this side and then two on that side with drip and LED lights. So that's going to be my next project back here. Alright, so a good day today. I got these. The main part, back part set up. You can see the drip out of each one coming out. And I'm going to be putting caulking in there so water can't get inside as well as electrical. There's going to be electrical uh, LED lights underneath each one of the planter boxes. Um, and then this is the drip. So the drip goes in here and I'm obviously going to fix that. And it goes, it comes out behind here and it goes back there. And then a couple of them you can see the brown pipe zip ties with the electrical pipe. And it's going up there, crazy stuff. You have one that's going there. You got another one that's going down here. It's a good day and then you can see the electrical for the lorries right there. And all the electrical is on this one wire, so I'm not going to hook that up till later. That's that. Alright, so here is the skeleton of the planter boxes. It's coming out really nicely. You can see the wires hanging out from underneath. Um, just barely. I'm going to be cutting those and splicing them depending on what, uh, what lights. We haven't picked those out yet. But, uh... You could paint this and leave it the way it is, um, but you do want to do a little bit more sanding and detailing, um, adding, adding some caulking in between the cracks and things like that because this is kind of a rough wood. So put some caulking in where the, where the screws are. As you can see, I put the caulking in around the drip and the wires underneath you actually can't see it now because I had etched in the piece of wood <clears throat> to fit that wire uh, and then you can see I put in these spacers this will kind of keep um, this part of it straight so it won't bow in and out so it's screwed in on this side it's screwed in on the front and then I also screwed it in underneath from uh, from the bottom and I have one two and then three now because these these two by eights uh, are only eight feet long they're not a full ten inch ten foot length I had to cut it or it was I had to two piece it so that's why I added another spacer here and another spacer here and they're also screwed in on both sides and underneath as well so that will hold it very well um, these are the drain holes I'm gonna be putting in you can see there's one there, one in, pretty much in between. This is a bigger area, so I put two there and one on the other end. And I'm going to put these, I'm going to drill a hole and put these in there. And then I'm going to put a weed block down. That way the dirt doesn't fall, just fall through the hole so the water can drip. Unfortunately, you know, when the water drips off of this one, it's going to go straight into this one. But if this one's too full with water, then it will just drop back into that one again and into the ground. So now the redwood, if you do want to use redwood instead of just leaving it the way it is like this, the redwood will probably cost about another thousand dollars for materials and labor um, <clears throat> as well as a stain because you got to put a good stain on it. Redwood's a very soft wood. You could also use Ipe, which is almost the same price. It's a much darker wood, but it looks really nice. It's very, very hard, hardy. 
um, and hard as well. And you gotta use, you gotta pre-drill that stuff. I did pre-drill all of these screws to make sure I didn't get too much splitting. And um, these are all three-inch screws. So this morning when I got here, I went ahead and I got a one-inch one by three-eighths drill bit um, to make the hole for this guy right here. This is a one inch, so the outside is a one inch by three quarter, which is the inside fitting for PVC pipe. And what I do is I use this as a drain hole and for the for the soil and you know to breathe. So I went ahead and I drilled the holes, vacuumed everything out because it gets really messy, and then just test these to make sure they fit in nicely. The reason why I got these is because it has a little lip. So it keeps it from sliding down, which is nice. Um, and it'll fit in just like that. So, what you do is you, I use this uh, heavy duty sealant. It's a uh, Loctite, so it also adds, uh, acts as a, um, an adhesive. So it'll also stick too. It is kind of sticky, so keep that in mind when you're putting it on. You may make a mess. It's mold and mildew resistant. You can kind of read on it. Uh, won't crack or shrink, paintable in 30 minutes, and 100% waterproof. So that's important because this is going to be in soil. So you can see here, I had previously put the caulking around there. So what you want to do, and I kind of have this upside down right now, is you want to fit this inside the hole, just like this. Make sure you put enough on there so that when you push down on it, it will make a nice seal. Then you can just go around with your finger, smooth it out. Now if you if you feel like you need a little bit more, it doesn't hurt anything to you know add some more on there. If you have any extra on your fingers, you can just put it wherever you want because this is all going to be covered anyways. So you can see there's a little hole right there. Now whether that's a hole to get to the bottom or if that's just one of these random holes that are in this wood, I'm going to cover it up anyways. <clears throat> so I just add a little bit more. Now I'm going to be sealing this whole thing up with, um, with a thick sealer. The sealer is kind of like this and you paint it on. But... So you can see I've done it with that one, I've done it with all these. So then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to seal all this and then I'm going to put the weed block down over it so you don't end up with all the dirt falling inside of here. Now it doesn't, you can see right here, it doesn't come all the way out and if you want you can always protect the inside of this by putting like um, the same the same sealer that I'm going to be using on the on the inside. You can put it also on the bottom of this just to protect this or if you want you can also put some caulking in there but I've never had any issues with that so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And that's just a little tip for the next step. Here I am moving along with the trenching and the sprinkler and drip. So as I go along, so I don't get lost of which tubes are which, I number them. So N is for north drip. You got number one and two sprinklers. And then you got number three over there. And then three is also going to be here because there's going to be the first sprinkler is going to be right here. And then you can see north one and two here. So I'm just going to keep going across. I have already laid some PVC, oh, so tired, electrical. I'm going to run some wires through there. I can run at least three 12 2 wires under there, so that's what I'm going to be doing, but I ran out, so I got to get some more of that. Um, that's going to be for the landscape lighting. And then I have the two pipes, one of those is going to be for the drip which I've actually already put right there. I've already finished that part of it. 
and then the other part is going to be for the number one sprinklers which are right here on the on the north side All right, so today I got the redwood. Love these lines. It's so soft and light. So you wanna make sure you definitely put a stain or paint these to protect it from the sun. Um, <coughs> this one's really cool. I love this lines. It's really nice. Um, Ipe is another way to go, which will last a lot longer. It's much heavier, um, but this is a light wood that's good for these walls. The Ipe is greater, is better for the decks. Now, you want to make sure you pre cut these corners because they're not going to be straight a lot of the time. So you can see how crooked that is right there. So I always pre cut those and then I measure from there after I've already cut. These are not 10 inch pieces, so I'm going to be two piecing these because I uh, 10, 10 foot, these are not 10 feet exactly. So I'm going to be taking and I'm gonna be taking these, putting these on the side just like this. I'm gonna be raising the top. The top part of it is gonna be one inch and three quarters so that it, it helps hide the pressure treated wood a little better. And then I'm gonna put the other piece over the front of this so you're not gonna see, oh, over the front of this so you're not gonna see any of this. It's gonna look really nice, and then the other the other half is gonna be another inch inch and three quarters. So it's basically gonna be right in the, right in the middle. I drew a little line right there, so it's gonna it's gonna come out about like that far as well. So you also won't see it, and the lights that I put underneath you won't see those as well. You'll just see it glowing. So it'll make the box look bigger than it really is. Okay, so the outer is pretty much all done. I did sand the edges a little bit right here so you can see it's not really um, it's not sharp so it's got a nice rounded edge just like the top does so the next step I have here is gonna be I'm gonna put caulking along the edges right here just so that water and stuff doesn't get in the back side of here um, and then I'm going to seal the inside. So I got to vacuum all this out again, clean it all out. It's, it's pretty much dry. Uh, by, by tomorrow, it should be 100% dry. So, and you can really feel whether it's wet or not. And then, and you can see here, well, this is looking good. So the box, like I said, the box is an inch and three quarters higher on the top and the bottom. So it gives it a bigger look than what it really is. What I really like is, you know, this to me is like an art piece with the different designs and styles with this redwood. And I really like the colors, especially when you add a good, a, a really nice, like almost like a dark, shiny, uh, semi-transparent stain, which is probably what we're gonna be adding to it. They haven't picked out what color they want yet. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask and give you any tips. Um, you know, just making sure that the screws are all in a straight line. As you can see, these screws right here, you have the cut right here, and then you have these screws which are in line right with that line. So I do that with each one of them. So here's a review of this Flex Seal. This is the liquid white color. They also have it a black and I think I saw a brown and for me what it is it's it's a mixture it feels like a mixture of paint and caulking and what I did here was I poured big a bunch of it on the inside and then I just kind of used a brush and brushed it all up on the sides um, it goes on pretty thick it says that you can use multiple coats so if I start seeing holes, I'll probably put more cult coats in it. And you can see here, kind of pressing it down. That's why you have to pour a lot because it does take a lot to cover. I used half a can for this 10 foot by six inch 
um, 10 foot by 6 inch planter. So, and I put caulking around the sides, on the sides, so that water and dirt doesn't get in there, and and because that can that can cause issues. So I wanted to keep that nice and clean. So now I'll show you. I'll try and do this with one hand. Da da da. Da da da. -da. in here. I gotta watch out for this hole I made. I don't want a bunch of this going in the hole. Just pour a bunch of this just like that. Okay. I guess you can say it kind of looks like taffy too. Alright, so you can see. And then I'm going to take my three inch brush. Just squish it all along the, along the corners. And this is you get. Make sure there's plenty on the corners. It's kind of a little hard for me to record and do this at the same time. Because I need to watch what I'm doing. See, I'm just kind of, there's a bunch of extra, so I'm just, oops, crap, I don't want that in there. So, let's put it on my shoe. Okay. And then just brush it up the wall. Flip the brush around a little bit. And what this is gonna do is it's, it's actually gonna dry up and make a nice rubber, a rubberized bucket basically, so that I can put soil and water in here. I feel like it's it's much easier than putting using a pond liner because you can use a pond liner and I have used that before the difficult part of doing putting a pond liner in it, though is the um, just end up you end up with a bunch of extra creases and folds and it can be a real pain so this is a little more Like once you pour it, it's in. The pond liner, if you don't do it right, you can end up with holes. And then that'll cause problems. Then you gotta pull it out. This stuff, if you have a leak somewhere, you just pull out the dirt, clean it up, and then re-pour more of this back in. some of this before I put the drip in but that's okay hopefully I might have to shave some of that back off or change the head on that so I can put the drip on, back on there and then I will also put this stuff once this is dries I make sure I have plenty here then I will put more on the top just as a protective coating. This top part is not going to be under the dirt, so it doesn't really need it. But if you're going to put it on, on the sides, you might as well put it on the top too, just to help protect it. says wait 24 hours for it to dry so it's nice to be in California you know you, you can you don't have to tarp anything up or worry about the weather so much I just want to paint this on a little bit 
you need to go back in like five minutes just to double check that you don't end up with any extra holes like see here I can see hole there just to do this maybe half maybe half of this and then that's gonna be it so there's a hole right there so what I'll do is I'll just paint some of this stuff around because I still have extras down at the bottom here just keep making nice and thick basically you want to make it thick enough to where you can't see the brown showing through the white then you know that it's nice and thick. <laughs> 